All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining me today. My name is Sally Munter, and I am the Sales and Training Coordinator with Milady. And I have the pleasure of introducing our author today, Jim Harrison. He is the author of Aromatherapy, Therapeutic Use of Essential Oils for Aesthetics. And he's going to be talking today about um, the power of essential oils in spa and aesthetics. So I will go ahead and turn it over to you, Jim. All right. Thanks, Sally. And uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. Really, uh, really appreciate it and um, really love the opportunity to do this and tell you guys about uh, aromatherapy and essential oils. Uh, let me give you just a, a hint of a bit of background on uh, myself here. I've been a beauty therapist for um, it's over 30 years now and uh, like to call it beauty therapist um, because I work mainly from a, a health perspective. I really look at the healing aspect of, of um, uh, the spa and aesthetic work that I do and uh, the healing aspect of uh, beauty itself and also that beauty and health are synonymous. So looking at it as a beauty therapist is a good way to go, especially when we're talking about uh, and how they work. Uh, I've been, um, uh, early on I got into herbology and nutrition and diet and, um, you know, really looking at, at the health aspect of beauty and then discovered essential oils, which really became my passion. Uh, one of the reasons for that is uh, the simplicity of it. Uh, when I got involved with herbs, I was a little bit lazy and, you know, making my own tinctures uh, didn't really happen all that much. And with essential oils, you're, you're working with drops. You're working with, um, you know, something that's so easy and so simple to use and then so easy to incorporate incorporate into uh, anything that you're already doing. And the other thing that really sold me on essential oils was um, the potential that they hold, which are the things that we're going to be talking about. And that potential is the best defined as holistic. You're working on so many different levels uh, of the human being. And when you're talking about beauty and when you're talking about skin care and you're talking about somebody's health, there are so many different aspects to look at uh, in, in the person to see, you know, if there's a symptom, why is that there? And so the holistic perspective is, is so important, and the essential oils just really, really cover it. Now, being a webinar, um, it's, it's uh, you know, and, and the word aromatherapy, it's a buzz going on. Uh, with the word aromatherapy, it's a little, little interesting uh, because you think it's all about smell. But, you know, working with essential oils, it goes far beyond that. They're really a, a multi-sensory experience, and, you know, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, so benefit from using essential oils uh, in aromatherapy in a, a beauty practice or as a beauty therapist, as an esthetician, a massage therapist, whatever uh, you may be doing. Um, Let's look at just a few of the few things that essential oils uh, help you to develop and help you to understand. So you really develop a good working knowledge of natural therapies and natural skin care. Uh, because when you're working with the essential oils, you're working with the essence of a plant. And the plants really offer so much as far as uh, therapeutic benefit uh, for health and for beauty. So I could use either one of those words. So sometimes I'll call it health, sometimes I'll call it beauty health. Stop doing both. Um, also, improved results in skin care treatments, uh, absolutely. You can just, like I was saying, it's uh, holistic, and you can tap into so many different um, causes of the skin condition. I mean, if the skin's in great condition, you're, you're making enhancements. If uh, there are symptoms of the skin, then you can tap into it without even knowing what you're tapping into sometimes, which is really interesting with essential oils. You know, you have a, a symptom and you just can't get into uh, or understand what the cause of that symptom may be. Uh, essential oils can get it whether you know that what the symptom is or not. That's, uh, again, one of the beauties of essential oils. Uh, customizing your treatments. Um, this is a really cool aspect of essential oils and part of the art of aromatherapy where um, you can take a base material as far as uh, skin cream, massage cream, whatever, and you can create individualized formulas that, that really get uh, specific for the individual so that rather than having one thing for everybody, you can customize your treatments and that will build customer loyalty um, mainly because they can't go anywhere else to get what you've just done for that person. Um, plus, there's a very, uh, you know, we care about you factor that goes into that. When, you, when you're customizing something for somebody, you know, you, you really have to uh, have some concern for who that person is, and it really shows that you care. So, you know, that's also something that uh, counts a lot, not, on, not only for building 
uh, client loyalty, but it also helps in uh, the therapeutic uh, action, uh, the results of what you're getting in a treatment. Um, adding to your holistic potential, this is, uh, you know, I, I mentioned this a little bit, but this will be something that I, I will carry on through this whole presentation. Uh, treating emotions and the skin simultaneously, or the body and the mind. And that's just a very simplistic way of looking at, at holistic potential because the essential oils with their life force energy and uh, the potential at, um, you know, that, that I can't get into this, but I usually talk about quantum physics when I talk about the energetic resonance of the essential oils. You know, what, what you have is something that is so, in, it's so small and so in tune with, with the energetic resonance of the plant and energetic resonance of um, of life in general, and this is where when you when you get into what's called quantum physics, you can understand that a little bit better. But getting away from that life force energy, looking at the very physical properties, almost pharmaceutical properties of essential oils, uh, you have something that is that's really in tune to what how we think of medicines. And on the emotional level, there aren't too many things. In fact, I can't really think of anything else that taps into the emotion. Uh, the mind and thought in the way that essential oils do simultaneously being pharmaceutical-like. So there's a real intense holistic potential when you're working with essential oils. Um, raising your value as a therapist, uh, this is something that I, I'm, it's almost um, being redundant here when I was talking about building client loyalty. Um, you know, your value as a therapist is, is built because you can customize, because you do show that you have a concern who the person is and why they're having uh, the skin condition or, you know, if you're working on their body, what, whatever it may be, um, you know, there's a certain concern that's going to raise your value as a therapist. And then the results that you get when you're working with essential oils, um, you know, this will also, you know, really show that you have the potential of being a very, very effective therapist, which, um, you know, again, you're going to build client loyalty and build a client base from this. Uh, when you look at the products that are available uh, that are considered aromatherapy products or essential oil products, uh, there's a lot of potential in, in building a nice um, retail uh, or store or however you're going to do it, uh, but your, your retail section really becomes built out a bit with the essential oils. You can sell individual essential oils, you can sell kits, you can sell blends, you can customize a lot of the retail products. So if you're customizing your treatments, you can also turn around and give that same uh, formula to your customers to take home, which is uh, you know, really a beautiful thing, again, with the essential oils. Um, first, uh, let's give a definition to aromatherapy because aromatherapy and the term essential oils are not regulated uh, by law. So anything can be called an aromatherapy product and when Glade Air Fresheners can do it, you know that anyone can do it no matter what's going on in there. And that's a real tricky thing about working with essential oils and working with aromatherapy. Um, you know, two reasons for that is that one thing is that People can sell something that says aromatherapy or essential oils, and it's not even close to being an essential oil product, which means that it will not be a real aromatherapy product, and it just becomes a marketing product. So that really throws things off. Now, products like that are out in the marketplace. What can happen, and what does actually happen, is somebody who wants to try an essential oil or try an aromatherapy product, and then they go out and they get it, well it's not going to work. It's not going to do the magic that essential oils are capable of doing. And then this person has, you know, bad taste in their mouth or a bad smell in their nose for um, what they consider an aromatherapy product. So it gives a bad reputation to aromatherapy. And, and that's, you know, one of the drawbacks. But we can easily overcome that just by giving somebody the real thing, which I've had really no problem with through my 20-plus years of working with essential oils. Uh, so a definition. It's an art, it's a science, and it's a skill of using essential oils for health of body and mind. And that's just the most simplistic definition, but it really covers it all, especially when you look at this as an art. It's a very, very creative practice when you get into essential oils and start working with them. And the more information you have to work with, the more powerful and the more artistic and the more creative you can be. Uh, it is absolutely a science, and I'll show you why in just a couple minutes here. And it's a, a skill. When you combine the science with the art, you're really creating a skill that uh, you know just doesn't happen with any other modality I've ever worked with. Um, the essential oils. The essential oils. This is a part of a definition that um, 
the International Standardization Organization has put out there. But essential oils are an oil byproduct extracted through distillation of plant material or mechanical pressing of citrus rinds. So what this is saying is something is called an essential oil. It is the, it's extracted through distillation. And distillation is water or water steam or steam alone. And basically what it is is a steam uh, breaks open the cell pockets that the essence is contained in where in the plant. Uh, it, the essence will evaporate along with the steam. It goes to a cooling pipe, drops to the other side. They both become liquid. You have water and you have oil. The oil naturally separates. And then it's separated from the water. And that will be your essential oil. Um, any other way, there, there are extracts called absolutes. There are supercritical extracts. And there are a few others that people will call essential oils. But by definition, essential oil must be done through distillation or mechanical pressing. And if you've ever squeezed the rind of an orange or a grapefruit and got that little stuff squirting in your eye, it's not water. It is the essential oil that's being um, extracted from the, the rind. And that is generally how the citruses are done. They're through a mechanical pressing or what's called centrifugation, where it's a spinning process and the essence is extracted that way from the rind. But essential oils, by definition, are the uh, product extracted through distillation or the rind. And I'm not going to get into I was going to talk a little bit about them being secondary metabolites of the plant. And, um, but I guess I just did mention that, so I might as well continue it. it what, what it is is that the plant produces these as part of the, almost like their immune system. So when I talk about some of the therapeutic properties, the plant developed the essential oil or the essence within itself to protect itself from the environment or from insects, herbivores, funguses, and um, you know, a number of other things. So the, the plant itself is using the oil in the same way that we are using them once we've extracted them. Uh, what we're looking at right now is um, frankincense. And because we can't smell the oils, we're going to take a look at the oils. And this is actually, visually, there's, there's something to be said for understanding the um, essential oils. Frankincense grows in hot desert climates. And it's a resinoid. Uh, which is what you're looking at. You're looking at the resin that's coming from the plant. And this tells us a little bit about what frankincense will do for us, where it's in a hot climate. Uh, when you think about what an inflammation is, an inflammation is a hot, irritated symptom. And frankincense is actually very good for um, bringing down inflammation. It's also good for fevers. It's cooling. And so you can see that what it's used for, for us, as in, in our biology or our humanness, so fevers or for inflammation, a hot symptom, it actually, the frankincense uses that in, within itself to cool itself from the hot desert climate. So it's one of the things about um, looking at essential oils, it's not just the smell that'll tell you what they do, it's its environment, it's visually how it looks. Um, now here's lavender, which is a beautiful, gorgeous plant. And this is population lavender. And the reason that this is um, being labeled as population lavender, there's a certain growing process uh, that's used to produce what's called population lavender. Sometimes it's called lavender fine. Uh, but what it is is it, this is farmed, but it's grown as if it were grown wild. And the reason that that makes this a, a more therapeutic or much better lavender essential oil is because the plant is then producing the oil more in its natural environment, where if it's farmed and done from clones and cuttings and, and you know, overly taken care of, the plant doesn't need to produce the essential oil uh, in the same way. And so leaving the plant to just develop on its own produces a much more therapeutic composition within its essential oil. So population is one of the most therapeutic uh, lavender oils to use. Um, now, here's the downside of that is that there is no one that will um, regulate this. And so you can end up buying lavender fine or lavender population that really wasn't. So uh, knowing your supplier is, is um, kind of a, a mantra that I teach a lot. You really need to know who you're buying your oils from in order to get uh, you know, the things that I'm talking about here. Uh, we're looking at harvesting the plants because one of the interesting things about essential oils and aromatherapy is that it's, it's just real old school. There's not a lot of high technology used even today. I mean, these pictures are very recent, all within the last, um, let's say, five to six years, uh, these pictures were taken. And what we're looking at in the top right here is um, a neroli uh, harvesting, 
which is really low tech. I mean, this guy's even using a branch to kind of knock the flowers off of the orange tree. So neroli is the orange blossoms. And so what he's doing is he's just getting in there and, and knocking the tree around a bit, and then they're catching the, the blossoms into this what looks like a blanket. So that's about as low tech as you can get. Um, and then I guess this is pretty low tech too. Here in Somalia, these are two women working in the uh, – frankincense bushes picking the resins and so they'll collect the resins and they bring them back to a tent and they'll be divided up uh, for you know the quality of the frankincense that they're looking for that will be best distilled and right next to that on the lower left there is um, Bulgarian rose harvesting the rose petals are so incredibly delicate it really takes somebody with skill to pick those rose petals um, and so they're harvested. It's, uh, you can't really see it, but the woman in the distance there has a trash bag. So they're, they're just kind of dropping these petals into trash bags or bring them off to uh, a distillation or a still that's back in that housing that you see in the background. And a little more high tech here is in Australia with um, the Australian tea tree harvesting, where there is a little bit of farming machinery going on in tea tree harvesting. It's a lot more... Uh, uh, it's, it's gotten a little more advanced as far as uh, technology. Uh, tea tree is a lot more popular. It's been, uh, uh, you know, really uh, industrialized a little bit more than most essential oil plants have. But um, you really get a good idea of the heart and soul that goes into these things. And I think that's a real important aspect of, of essential oils uh, is that there's, there's a lot of love, a lot of care, and, and there's still just a, a real natural flow that, that goes from start to finish with them. Uh, let's look at the therapy of aromatherapy. Uh, after all, there, there's the aroma word, which means smell, but it's absolutely about therapy. So when you look at uh, what they have to offer is, uh, as far as therapeutic benefits for health and beauty, you can combine those two, either health or you know, the same thing. Anti-inflammatory is uh, one, of the, one of the things that I really find beneficial in uh, uh, working on skin care. Uh, because inflammation causes free radicals, and free radicals cause a lot of the oxidative damage that happens to cells, which uh, causes the aging process. And uh, so inflammation is a very important thing to reduce. Um, even in acneic skin, you know, we see that, you know, the, the actual pustule or the, uh, the um, acneic condition itself, it looks red, it looks inflamed. But even before you get to the point where you notice inflammation, uh, acneic skin is caused by internal inflammation that, that causes the keratinized cells to become sticky, and so they don't exfoliate properly, and that's how the congestion starts. Uh, I'm going to show a formula, actually, for, um, uh, for acne that will incorporate this anti-inflammatory property. Um, the antimicrobial properties is probably one of the most documented as far as scientific research is concerned, um, aspects of working with the essential oils and, and their properties. They are intensely antibacterial. Uh, one of the things that really sold me very early on in my career as an aromatherapist, I had a, um, no, he wasn't even a year old, my son, when I started getting into essential oils. And he had chronic ear infections, which, you know, at the time I wasn't really working too much with alternative therapies because I was too new at it. Uh, so I wasn't really trusting myself, and I went with the antibiotics, which wasn't a good idea because what you end up with is the chronic ear infection. You get antibiotics, you have a, a stronger, more antibiotic-resistant bacteria, you end up with another ear infection, and it just went on and on and on for months. And finally, I thought, I just have to try this. And I did one uh, treatment with working with essential oils very carefully with the oils that I was using because the most antimicrobial, which would be cinnamon and thyme and oregano, are also the most irritating. So I had to be very careful how I did this. But in treating my son, I just used cotton swabs with some essential oils on it. The infection went away within a day, and it never came back. I was so blown away, and that was one of the things that really, really, you know, turned me into one of the most passionate aromatherapists. I mean, it just it, it took me for the ride uh, because I was so amazed. And uh, one of the beauties of essential oils, you never become jaded. When something like that happens, you never get a ho-hum thing, you know, yeah, yeah, I knew it would work kind of thing. You know, it's, it's, always, it's always impressive. And it's, and it's always, you know, not so much a surprise, but it always feels like a surprise when it works. It's just incredible. Uh, so antibacterial, antifungal, and also antiviral. You hear so often in, in um, our medical system that there's nothing that treats viral infections, but the essential oils are incredibly potent. 
for viral infections. They've uh, also, you know, they've been used for herpes. They've been used for some of the most uh, resistant viral infections and uh, with great success. And this is really well documented in uh, scientific research and academic studies. Um, antioxidant properties, they are powerfully free radical uh, scavengers, so they're great to use as, uh, as antioxidants. Cell regeneration, uh, when you hear about lavender being wound healing, that's part of its cell regenerative uh, uh, property. And there's another really great oil called helichrysum. Its common name is Everlasting or Immortel, but helichrysum, italicum, is one of my favorite oils to use in skincare because it's such a powerful uh, cell regenerative um, oil. Detoxification, if you've ever used lemon or grapefruit uh, in a body wrap to detoxify water retention or any kind of fluids, they're just uh, excellent, especially the citruses. And digestive aids, uh, everyone knows peppermint. Take a drop of peppermint, it helps uh, digestion. There's a few other oils that will also do that. And you know that's just a short list of its therapeutic benefits. Um, then we look at the mind and emotions with the essential oils. Um, here's where that, that holistic aspect comes in. Uh, the essential oils really have um, they can adjust and have a direct effect on moods and emotional imbalance. Uh, and this is something that is not, it has a physical reason why this works. When you smell anything, it goes directly into your limbic system, through your olfactory system into the limbic system. And there are mechanisms within the brain where when you smell, you release certain neuropeptides and hormones and other things that physically affect how you feel. So even though we think of emotions as a thought process, it actually does have physical properties to it within the body, physical biological properties. So when you smell something, you're triggering neurochemicals. And this is what's happening when you're smelling essential oils. And the essential oils have triggers for certain neurotransmitters. They can uh, help stimulate serotonin. They can, um, you know, endorphins. And, and, you know, you really have to... You, you, get into the essentials a little deeper for to really understand these things. But that's basically how it's happening. Uh, so anti-anxiety, antidepressive, there could be calming, uh, memory stimulants. Basil is a really great oil to uh, stimulate memory. Um, and also uh, as a mental stimulant. So if you have to be smart, a little bit of basil goes a long way, as also uh, peppermint and rosemary really good that way too. Uh, mood adjustment. And um, interesting thing about mood adjustment is that Smell is uh, directly connected with memory and emotions. And this can be a tricky thing when working with essential oils because if there is a negative memory or negative emotion stored within the brain, and even an oil like rose could have a negative memory stored. I mean, if you're a child and you go into a funeral home and there's roses around and you have a really weird, scary experience, uh, and then as an adult, you may smell rose and you will feel that anxiety that you felt as a child in that experience, but you may not have the direct memory. So there can be an uncomfortable feeling triggered by an essential oil that would normally, like rose, be anti-anxiety, anti-depressive, calming, and just a beautiful, beautiful oil uh, emotionally. But if you have a negative emotion stored with that fragrance, then the opposite could happen. And, and it, it's doesn't happen a lot, but every once in a while you notice that um, you know, people when they smell something will feel uncomfortable or, or it may trigger a direct memory. I'm sure all of you have had that with a, uh, an odor triggering a memory. Um, so when you get into memory stimulant, memory uh, mental stimulants, mood adjustment, especially mood adjustment, um, it really has to do with the memory association uh, as much as it has to do with what neurotransmitters are released by the oil. Um, stress relief. Uh, lavender is probably the most uh, known oil for stress relief, but neroli and uh, what else we can, can we throw into that pile? There are just so many of them. Geranium works really well. Uh, clary sage. Clary sage is an interesting oil because uh, clary sage is very good for stress relief, but it also has uh, an estrogen or phytoestrogen uh, compound to it. So it actually can adjust you hormonally, which will also adjust your mood. So when you connect from a holistic level and, and uh, people will talk about, well, it's my hormones. Well, why are your hormones out of balance? Well, sometimes it's about the stress and the emotions that are setting the uh, hormones out of balance. So if you work from an emotional perspective, you can put the hormones into balance. But if you're working with clary sage, which has a compound in it which works on stress, 
also has a compound that's a phytoestrogen. You're working on both levels there. You're working with the hormonal imbalance directly, but you're also working with the stress that may be uh, triggering the hormonal imbalance. Um, the chemistry of essential oils is probably the most effective way to work with the essential oils, having a good knowledge of their chemical composition. When you look at an essential oil and you see you know, this whole liquid, what that liquid is made up is a combination of, of molecules that each are known to have a certain property to them. So when you're looking at uh, the chemical composition of the essential oil and having a foundational knowledge on what those uh, compounds do, it really helps you to fine tune and to become more accurate with your essential oil work. So you're looking at the therapeutic composition of the oil when you're breaking down the chemistry. So when I've been talking about stress relief, there's a family of compounds called esters. The esters, if you know that an essential oil has esters, you're automatically going to know that that oil will have some stress relieving properties because that's one of the properties that the ester family has. Uh, so therapeutic composition is uh, one of the main things that you get from your, your uh, knowing the chemistry. In working with the essential oils, it also helps you to determine quality. There's a test called GCMS, uh, Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometry. Uh, that test is used to look at the chemical composition of the oils, and it helps to determine the quality of the oils. It's not foolproof, but it's a really good way to, um, uh, to have your, you know, to get an idea that at least whoever you're buying from knows enough to, to test the oils to check them. Uh, safety and contraindications. Now, if I tell you that this, uh, a certain oil contains phenols, which is a family of um, uh, molecules, the phenols, then um, here's a thyme oil that contains phenols. What you're going to know from that is that oil has the potential to be irritating because the phenols are the skin irritating uh, family of compounds. So this is another thing that knowing the chemistry will, will help you with is the safety and contraindications. Uh, now, the holistic potential. I'm going to skip right over to my next slide. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Yes, it is. Um, when you're looking at the holistic potential, this is the structure effect diagram. And what this diagram is, is it's a, um, uh, Pierre Francom is one of the, uh, as far as the research, he works for Estee Lauder and has had great lab equipment to be able to research essential oils. Uh, he's really come out with a lot of incredible information on uh, scientific knowledge of essential oils. And he worked with this structure effect diagram, which takes the family of molecules and really down to the individual molecules that, are, that the essential oils are composed of, and it looks at it from an electromagnetic frequency. So when we look at this up and down, uh, from the negative at the top or calming to the stimulating and positive at the bottom, what we're looking at is from where it says balancing to the top, we're at negative electromagnetic frequency. So at balancing, we're at zero. We go up to negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on, up to the top. And then from balancing zero, when you go down, you're working from a positive electromagnetic frequency. Now what this tells us about the oil is that if a compound within the oil is within that lower part of the chart and it has a positive electromagnetic frequency, it's going to tell us that that oil has the potential to have stimulating properties. And if we go to the left side of the chart and then the bottom, it will also tell us that that has not only stimulating properties, but the potential to have irritating properties. Now, when we go up to the top of the chart, when I was talking about esters, I'm going to show you another chart where the family of esters will be on the chart, and it will show you that the esters are up at the top of the chart. So what this chart does is it gives us a visual idea of what the chemical compounds are doing for us. Uh, right to left, we have on the left side, we have wet. And over to the right, we have dry. What that tells us is its polarity. And what the polarity means is what is the family of compounds relationship with water. So if something is on the dry side, it's what is it's called lipophilic or hydrophobic, meaning that it's almost afraid of water. And if you put a drop of, it's, let's say that, that oil where it says cool, if that is an oil, if we put that into water, it will beat up into little tiny balls because it's almost like it's trying to get, it's running away from the water. What that, what that oil is, is it's on the dry side. It has a lipophilic property or hydrophobic property. So it's, it, has less, it has more resistance towards water. When you look at the wet side, it has more of a harmony with water, but it's an oil, so it will not mix with water. 
But if you put those oils that, that have a high amount of compounds from the wet side into water, it's going to look more like an oil slick that you see on a puddle of water in a, on a road where the oil sort of spreads out. And so if you do this in a bath and you throw lavender in there, you'll see lavender spread out a little bit. But if you threw something like um, blue chamomile into water, that's one that will beat up. And as long as I'm mentioning the blue chamomile, this is another way of looking at this chart where we, we want to look at it more visually. So when I talk about blue chamomile, and you can see that blue is associated with being cool, visually that oil is telling us that it's going to be cooling or anti-inflammatory. And the reason that it has that cooling anti-inflammatory property is because its chemistry is on the dry side or lipophilic and also has a, has, it's not real strong on the uh, electromagnetic, negative electromagnetic frequency, but it does have some calming properties to it because it is on that side of the chart. And when I talked about the phenol and I talked about line, I mean uh, thyme oil, having a phenol, the phenols are actually in that lower left corner. And when you look at thyme oil that contains phenols or oregano, it's sort of a reddish brown color. So that oil is actually telling us what its properties are as well. So visually, the, from the chemistry and understanding this uh, structure effect diagram, you can really get a good idea of what these oils are going to be. Now, in the balancing uh, area of the chart, there are oils that have a high amount of compounds that are in that area where they're close to zero electromagnetic frequency. And I have one oil that's this beautiful emerald green color. So again, the color gives us a really good idea of what the oil is going to do. Now, this isn't true of all the oils. Like you've seen lavender, and most lavenders are very pale yellow or uh, almost clear. But lavender does have a high amount of compounds from that middle section, and so that pale yellow color also is giving us a good idea of what's going on. So this is the structure effect diagram, which is, and this is just the setup, giving you an idea of when you look at the chemistry of oils, you can understand what's going on here. Now here's lavender's chemical composition. And so what I do, these circles are the chemical families. What's underneath where it says, let's look at that green one, or the sort of bluish green one where it says esters that I've been talking about. Linol acetate is the first um, molecule that I've listed there. Linol acetate is one of the main compounds that's found in lavender, um, and it's an ester, but it also has a few other esters in there. Now, lavender is a very complex oil. It has over 200 different compounds that we know about. So when we look at the chemical structure of lavender, you can see all the different compounds, and you can see that it almost circles around this entire chart. And this is one of the, the, again, a visual way of looking at lavender. And you can see why lavender is one of those oils that just does everything. When in doubt, use lavender. So if you want it to be calming, use lavender. If you want it to have a little energizing properties, it won't be a stimulant, but you know what? Use lavender. If you want it to be detoxifying, you know, look at down there at the uh, lower right corner, the monoterpene family. That's your detoxifying family of compounds, which citruses contain high amounts of that monoterpene hydrocarbon. And one of the properties of those is they are drying or detoxifying. And you can see that it's on the dry side of the chart. So when I use the word drying, it actually fits in with the polarity, which is that word dry represents the polarity. Uh, so this, again, I'm, we're talking about the chemistry. So in lavender, you can see all of these different compounds that it has and why lavender is such a great oil because it's so complex and it comes from so many different parts of the uh, structure effect diagram and having so many almost opposite effects. Um, but it's a synergy of these effects. So lavender just creates its own personality, which just makes it one of the more beautiful oils. And... Um, so with the esters, that's a calming family of compounds. You have the monoterpene alcohols, which if you go just uh, opposite to the lower left there, uh, the monoterpene alcohols are a really important family of compounds because they're considered the medicinal family. Most herbs contain high amounts of that family of compounds. And so they're immune stimulating, they're uh, medicinal, they have antibacterial, antiseptic, antifungal. Uh, it's just a lot of properties that are, that are going on there. When I talked about cell regeneration, you can see in the upper left, but toward the center, there's a family of compounds called ketones. 
that family of compounds is the most cell regenerative. So, you know, without getting into too intense a conversation here about chemistry, what I'm telling you is that when you know the chemistry, and trying to, trying to demonstrate here, when you know the chemistry, you can really take an oil and find out what it's going to do, even if you don't know what that oil is going to do. And so you go to a book, like what I did in my book is I, I listed the oil, I listed some of its properties, but I also list the main uh, chemical compounds in there so that if you match the chemical compounds and go to the chemistry chapter, it will help guide you to understand what that oil will do or it will even help you understand why the oil is uh, listed as being cell regenerative or detoxifying or uh, you know, whatever it may be listed as. Um, now here's how to use a structure effect diagram in, uh, in skin care or actually any kind of uh, uh, healing or therapeutic um, uh, approach. But um, you know, in skin care we're looking at uh, upper right corner, inflamed and sensitive skin. So we're talking about a symptom here. If it's inflamed and sensitive, one of the best family of compounds, which that circle where it says hot allergy prone, that's the family of compounds called sesquiterpenes. The sesquiterpenes is what the blue chamomile has a high amount of. So I talk about blue chamomile not only representing itself as being cooling by its color blue, but the sesquiterpene family uh, is really good for hot, allergy-prone, inflamed, or sensitive skin conditions. But also the, the family of esters, which is the circle, the bigger circle right toward the center there and, and moving up the chart, um, that also is really good for inflamed and sensitive because a lot of times what inflammation is caused by or sensitivity is caused by stress and nervous conditions. And the esters are the best family of compounds to relieve nervous tension or nervous conditions. Um, the family of compounds that I called ketones, where it says fragile, degraded, and weakened, um, cell regeneration. So that's really good at strengthening the skin. Um, mature and dry skin conditions, and so yeah, cell regenerative would be great for that, but the um, family of compounds that I mentioned, the uh, monoterpene alcohols, you have aging, normal, parasitic. I mean, look at all the, uh, the symptoms that it helps to uh, you know, alleviate there. So when you get down to the bottom, the word cold is there. So it's not that you really want to add any kind of hot phenols, but you know, a little bit that wouldn't be irritating really helps for uh, people that tend to need a little bit of circulation towards their skin. So you can see the way the structure effect diagram works uh, in relation to symptoms. And so this, you know, if you don't want to be a chemist, you don't have to be to understand this chart. And that's why I designed this to be really uh, more of a visual presentation. So let's look at some individual essential oils here. It gets a little cut off at the bottom there, but I'll tell you what it says there under myrrh. Um, the helichrysum I mentioned already being one of the most uh, powerful cell regenerative essential oils out there. Um, and that's because of its ketone content. Uh, then inflammation. The, the helichrysum also contains, when I talked about the sesquiterpenes that are in blue chamomile, helichrysum also contains a family uh, or a compound from that family of compounds, the sesquiterpenes. And so it's really good for inflammation. Actually, helichrysum is one of the best oils to use after um, any kind of, of uh, bruise or wound, like if you got, you know, you whacked your head on the side of a table. A little bit of helichrysum on that will really keep the uh, inflammation down. Um, and so it's a really beautiful combination. It's in its own synergy where if you want something to regenerate the skin and uh, really help the healing of the skin, the anti-inflammatory properties are going to help because inflammation causes free radicals and free radicals are going to cause um, damage to the cell. So you're really helping to Re, uh, to prevent that damage, and then you're also helping to regenerate any cells that have already been damaged. Rosemary verbenone. Now here, um, I can't really get into this um, too intensely, but uh, verbenone, the reason I'm calling this rosemary verbenone is because it's um, called a chemical type, because rosemary can produce a different chemical structure depending on where it's grown. So the rosemary verbenone is, is telling you that it has a high amount of verbenone, which is a ketone, molecule. So it's within the ketone family, and like I just said about helichrysum, cell regeneration is what the ketones are known for. So rosemary verbenone is also a really excellent, excellent uh, oil to use in skincare. I throw it into all of my skincare formulas. In fact, uh, you know, the skincare um, 
that I that I produced. Uh, I think every formula has uh, rosemary verbenone in it because it's just such a beautiful smelling oil and just a, a great oil for cell regeneration and it doesn't cost a ridiculous amount of money like the helichrysum does, which is really unfortunate. Helichrysum got really popular and all of a sudden the price tripled. Um, so cell regeneration and liver tonic, that word kind of floated to the other side there. Uh, because rosemary in general, rosemary, no matter what chemotype it is, it, it's a good liver tonic. Rose is, uh, I was talking about lavender being really, um, having a lot of properties. Rose is just really intense on, on the uh, holistic molecular structure that it has. So it has multi-dimensional therapeutic properties. Uh, rose is just, it, it's expensive, so it doesn't get used a lot. But you know, if you want, if you want magic, Rose is the oil to go for. Uh, just therapeutically, it's got everything going on. And for emotional balance, it's just really beautiful, really great for the heart. Uh, energetically, uh, roses are just, we, we, you know, that's why you give roses for love. And uh, it's got it in there. Roses, rose delivers the love, the essential oil does. Uh, and really good for hormonal, and, uh, for hormonal balance or endocrine balancing. Uh, Palma Rosa is a geranium-like oil. It's very, very simple. Where rose is incredibly complex, uh, Palma Rosa is very simple, but it's a great antiviral uh, essential oil. I didn't write that in there, but it's really, really powerfully uh, antiviral. But it has, it's, it's a very inexpensive oil, so it's really great for skin care because of the cost. It brings the cost down, uh, but it does have cell regenerative properties that are really powerful. Uh, grapefruit. Detoxifying, I love using grapefruit in all of uh, my wraps or any time I need to um, release water, any kind of fluids that get trapped in the tissue. Plus grapefruit is just a happy, 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 happy smell. Uh, it's very uplifting. And you'll find that the citruses do that, and this has a lot to do with memory because when, um, when you have that, uh, you know, childhood, childhood for us in, in you know, Western societies is loaded with the citruses. You know, we have the citrus candies, we have the, you know, ice creams and smoothies and everything else. And so citruses tend to have a happy asso memory association. And so they tend to have a, an uplifting effect emotionally uh, because of memory as much as to what they're doing physically in the limbic system, like I talked about why oils are uh, emotionally uh, regulating. Uh, antiseptic as well, the uh, grapefruit has antiviral properties, a hint of antibacterial, but <clears throat> very powerfully antiviral. Uh, geranium adaptogenic, what adaptogenic means is that whatever the body needs, the geranium will do. It will adapt to the body's needs. So if you're stressed out, geranium can be calming. If you're sluggish, geranium can be energizing. And so anything in the body, geranium has a tendency to be regulating. It's a really good oil that way. Uh, has really powerful antimicrobial properties. It's one of the better oils. We think of tea tree as being one of the most antifungal oils. Actually, geranium uh, is really up there as far as uh, being powerfully antifungal. Um, and then cell regenerative. Geranium is another good one for um, skin care. Palma Rosa contains a compound that uh, geranium also contains, and that's why the similarity in the regenerative properties. Uh, I talked about clary sage already be hormonally balancing, and that's due to its phytoestrogen. It also has the cell regenerative properties, and it's extremely, extremely relaxing, and that's due to the powerful stress relieving and anti-anxiety properties that it has. And when we look at the chem, uh, chemical properties, it's from that high amount of esters that clary sage has. Um, the myrrh, and you can put frankincense, myrrh, sandalwood, cedarwood into this category where it's a, a more viscous or heavier oil. And the more viscous oils tend to have a really um, strong effect for skin care. Uh, one reason it's believed is because of the, um, uh, it doesn't evaporate or penetrate quite as quickly as lighter essential oils. So the heavier oils, because of the slower evaporation, it's almost like a time release where uh, you get antiseptic properties that stay longer. Uh, they do have anti-inflammatory properties, and that's because they are uh, the sesquiterpene compounds and the sesquiterpene alcohol uh, compounds, which are both uh, heavier molecular structures, so they evaporate slower, but also tend to be more anti-inflammatory. Um, the words you can't see there are uh, immune modulating. Myrrh tends to have some really good uh, immune uh, stimulating or I'd say modulating effects because you might not want the immune system to be stimulated if there's uh, allergic reactions. You want to modulate uh, 
the inflammatory response, which is part of the immune response of the body. So that's why it's more modulating more than uh, stimulating. And then the other word there is meditative. Uh, myrrh and frankincense tend to be oils that you find a lot in, in religious ceremonies because of their meditative um, effects. And this is an emotional effect, and what I like to call it is the, the calming of what's called a monkey mind. If you guys have ever tried to meditate and your brain is just going, that, 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 and just won't leave you alone, it's called monkey mind. And so myrrh and frankincense have a really good tendency to calm that down and, and kind of shut it up a little bit so that you're able to meditate, quiet the mind. And this is really good even if you're not meditating where you just need some focus. It's a, a really good oil to use along with uh, frankincense. So now let's look at a formula in uh, kind of taking everything I was just talking about and putting it all together. Uh, lavender, just already talked about lavender, it has extreme benefits to it. And so if we're looking at this as for an acneic skin condition, now when you think about what is, what's the cause of acneic skin, first of all, you really need to know what's going on there. And if you get it to, I think stress is one of the main things. So I always look at stress relief as the first thing to take care of in any acneic skin condition. So as a holistic formula, I'm using lavender to be soothing and uh, to reduce stress. Now I also have it in there as a general skin tonic because I'm trying to be as holistic as possible and there are some causes I don't know about and so rather than trying to figure everything out, well I'll just throw lavender in there and let lavender figure it out because whatever I need it's in there. Uh, so I have the cell regenerative properties so that will help to um, reduce or prevent any kind of scarring that may uh, be caused. And of course, there's uh, bacterial infection um, in uh, acneic skin, so you have the anti-infectious properties of the lavender as well. Uh, MQV, you might not be familiar with MQV. There's the common name of this oil is Niauli. And Niauli is uh, the common name, but they call it MQV because the MQV, when it comes from Madagascar, is a much more potent uh, especially on the immune stimulating effect of, of the MQV, the melaleucocum canervia vira de flora, say that three times real fast. Um, so they, they differentiated the Niauli, which normally comes from New Caledonia, and they gave the common name MQV to when it comes from Madagascar. Uh, so it's like it's melaleuca, melaleuca alternifolia is tea tree, so coming from the same family. You have the terpene alcohols, you have sesquiterpene alcohols, which are the compounds that are in there. And what you get out of that is really intense anti-infectious properties. So this is one of the best for uh, bacterial infection. It does have immune stimulating properties and it's detoxifying so it will help clear the pores out or any kind of congestion. Uh, Cape chamomile is a really beautiful oil and it combines almost two chamomiles. Roman chamomile, which is stress reducing, and the blue chamomile or the German chamomile, <coughs> excuse me, which is... Um, anti-inflammatory. So from the chemistry, I'm looking at the balance of sesquiterpene, hydrocarbons, and esters. Sesquiterpenes are what I talked about with blue chamomile. The esters are a high amount in Roman chamomile. So what you're getting from that is a holistic combination of stress-reducing properties and anti-inflammatory properties. And so that's why Cape chamomile is such a beautiful oil because it's synergistically combining uh, these two properties that when you're talking about an acneic skin condition with an inflammation, and also possibly caused by, or what I would say absolutely caused by stress, you're taking care of the physical and the emotional aspect here. Uh, then cedarwood, which is a really nice oil, and, and looking at this as a blend, and I'm not going to give you a formula because I think that's our next webinar is I'm going to talk a little bit about how to blend these things, and it's just there's too much to, to, to deal with in, in one webinar for this. Uh, so with cedarwood, uh, what we're looking at here is not only for blending to give it a nice base note when you talk about base, middle, and top note for fragrancing, um, but it also has its own properties here. It's a gentle circulatory stimulant, so it really helps to purify uh, what's going on in this condition because you want the blood to kind of help come in and, and detoxify and clear and clean and do its deal, plus also a little bit of lymphatic uh, action happens from the cedarwood. And then you have autonomic nervous system balance. Now, when I'm talking about stress reduction and the ester family, I'm talking about central nervous system. This is getting into the autonomic nervous system. And so what cedarwood, and this I found in a study, um, an academic study on cedarwood, the compound cedrol, that is one of the molecules in cedarwood. That is in the family of sesquiterpene alcohols, okay? So the cedrol, 
what they found from that one compound is that it's shown to reduce autonomic sympathetic activity, what we all know as the fight or flight response, which we tend to live in in our culture way too much. So what we're doing here is we're helping to work on the autonomic nervous system rather than the central nervous system and to reduce that fight or flight response, which quickens heart rate, <coughs> also speeds up uh, heart rate, lung, uh, breathing rate, and also slows down digestion. So you end up with a lot of physical properties when, uh, or physical damage when you're in fight or flight response all the time. So the cedar wood helps to bring up parasympathetic activity, which slows down heart rate, slows down the breathing rate, and helps put more emphasis on digestion, um, which is an important aspect of, of healing and health. I know that when you've eaten a meal, and if you actually give yourself a chance to do this, you get into that mellow mode. That's your parasympathetic activity kicking in where it's taking away from all the energy of breathing and heart and, and, and um, you know, the energy aspect of, of just, you know, moving around and, and having to live. It's bringing more emphasis into your digestion because your digestive system has to work and you need to slow down the rest of the body. So you want to balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic activity. Cedarwood is a beautiful oil for doing that. And in relation to acneic skin, um, this is an important aspect because there are chemical compounds that are released in the body through the fight or flight response. Those chemical compounds, uh, substance P is one of them, causes inflammation in the body and also re re causes a reaction, and I already talked about this, where the cells become sticky. When the cells become sticky, they aren't able to exfoliate and then sebum and debris gets stuck in the follicle and that's where the acneic skin condition starts coming from. So even before you see the inflammation, you're dealing with the inflammation of the body being released by these substances such as substance P. Um, so that's pretty much a, an overview of what we can do with essential oils. I know I gave you a lot of information here. Um, I think I should open it up for questions because we have, what, about six minutes going on here. So if we have any, uh, any questions, I'm kind of open to it. I'm Looking to see if I got any kind of um, any messages. Hi, Jim. Um, I just want to let Hi. everyone know that if you want to unmute your line to ask a question, make sure you hit pound six, and that will unmute your line. So that way we can we can hear you. So does anyone anyone have any questions at this time? I guess, I guess we're not. Hi there. I have a question about um, the sourcing of the oils. You mentioned, uh -huh. you know, you have to know your source. How can I, wh where would I find a list of, you know, where I should go for different oils? Is that online somewhere? Or? Well, I have, I have a lot of resources that I, that I use for this. Um, you know, it's, I, don't, I find that not one producer is always, uh, or one distributor is always the best. And what I recommend is, is what to look for is everyone should always list the botanical name of the, of the oil. Um, look for a distributor that talks about the GCMS, even though that can be a lie as well, which is unfortunate. And um, there are qualities they want to, you want to know where it's from. If they mention the chemical composition, that's always a plus to see where they are. Um, you know, I have my email address up here, and I, I, I think it's probably best if you email me I can put a short list together and send it out to people um, because it, it's, re it's really tricky. I mean, I have a couple of people that I work through, and there's a couple of people that are, are available online um, that uh, I would also recommend. So I, I think I'd rather send that information through email than uh, uh, putting it out there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Cool. Yeah, because it's can, a tricky Can we have a, we have a question on the, um, the Internet? Um, yeah. Karen asks, if someone has severe acne, how do you mix all of these oils together and with what base and concentration? Well, we're going to be doing that next time, but let's take that, that formula that I did. Uh, if you took everything and made it equal, now the, the formula is uh, basically it's 2.5% is about where you want to be. And the easiest way to do that is if you have a half ounce bottle or jar, uh, something as simple as olive oil, jojoba oil can be everything you have in there, okay, as far as what your base is going to be. And you have a half ounce bottle, 15 mil, and the formula would be 
the, the size of your bottle, 15, and it has to be in milliliters. So if you have a one ounce bottle, it's 30 mils, but we're going to look at 15 mils. You divide that by two, that's going to tell you total how many drops you, you need to use. Back to this uh, chart. Now, seven and a half is going to be what you come up with there. So I have one, two, three, four. Uh, so if I have two, four, three, I'm going to do two drops of each one of these oils. I might do three drops of MQV because I want a little more of, of uh, the anti infectious property. So I have two, three, two, and then one of the cedar wood. Or I could do two. You know, it's, it's very flexible. That's what I love about essential oils. I get that question so many times, and people want me to be so absolute, and I'm not. You know, it's like, okay, use five drops. Well, use 10 drops. You know, uh oh, I was pouring my oils in, and I ended up with seven drops of this one, and I only wanted five. Uh, not a big deal. But the general rule is take your mills, divide it by two. That tells you total how many drops you want to use. And your base, that is also, that's, you know, the, in my book, I go through that in detail because it's a big part of my class and it's a long conversation. But olive oil, 15 mils, you're going to use about seven to eight drops. That's a quick answer. Okay, and then um, we have one, I think we have time for one more quick answer from, um, from the presentation. Gail asks, uh, as a cosmetologist, where would I start to learn more about essential oils? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I wrote the book because I've, I've, it's, it's one of the best ways to do it. There are, you know, there's a lot of decent books, and that's have reference materials on hand. That's the best way to do it. Um, taking classes, if you can find someone that's taking a class. I do teach uh, classes and um, uh, I don't know what area you're in, but I'll be in uh, Seattle in September doing a class. I do some classes up in Boston. Um, you, know, you can email me to see where, where I'm going to be at. But if you look online, you're going to find some people that are doing it. And again, it's not regulated, so the quality of your class is, um, you know, you really need to do some research. That's the, you're, you really need to... Uh, Check out who you're learning from, what approach they do. Uh, I think I'm, uh, there aren't too many people that are doing it strictly for uh, aesthetics and cosmetology. And because my background of 30 years, that's what, you know, what I've always focused on. And um, also because I, I found that it, when I was working as a, just a health therapist trying to give people essential oils, I'd, I'd give them, you know, they'd have a digestive issue. And even though I was doing their hair or, or skin or whatever, you know, I'd hand them the, the, my formula for digestion. I'd say, here, this is really going to help your digestion. It's, you know, you've got stomach cramps. And I'd ask them the next time around to see if they use it. And they'd say, eh, no. So I really wised up. And health and beauty are the same thing. So now I take that same formula and I say, here, this is going to make you more beautiful. Just kind of rub it on your skin. And, and I turned it into a beauty formula and for the same purpose of health. But because they started using it as a beauty formula, they started using it more often. So I really find that, that um, you know, working as, in aesthetics or cosmetology is a great way to work. So, um, yeah, if you want to do it, just, you know, do some research on, on who you're learning from. All right. Well, um, thank you very much, Jim. And... Thank yeah, you, everyone, thank you. for joining us. Um, if you want more information on Milady or on Jim's book, which is Aromatherapy, the Therapeutic Use of Essential Oils for Aesthetics, um, you can check out our website, which is www.milady.cengage.com, and it's going to be on your screen if you're still online. And you can also check out our calendar of events to see all of our um, massage webinar series. So uh, thank you very much, Jim. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.